Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 21st, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. 204, actually 205 now on the great WRKO. Okay, coming up at 235. This is now the greatest crisis the Catholic Church has now ever faced. In fact, it's on the verge of a massive rupture and schism. You're not going to believe Pope Francis's latest comments. The Catholic Church, as we know it, if this, if these comments are upheld, it will be the end of the church as we've known it for 2000 years. A huge story. But first, and they continue to blame the guns. Listen now to Kelly Clarkson at the Billboard Music Awards yesterday. Go on about the shooting in Santa Fe by, let's just call him Dimitri. Okay, Dimitrios Pagorsis. I don't want to give him too much attention. Let's just call him Dimitri, uh, Demented Dimitri. So this is her going on about what Demented Dimitri did at Santa Fe, Texas. Roll it, Brittany. Before we start tonight's show, there's something I'd like to... This is going to be so hard. There's something I'd like to say about the tragedy Friday at Santa Fe High School. So sorry. I'm a Texas girl, and my home state has had so much heartbreak over this past year. And once again, y'all, we're grieving for more kids that have died for just an absolute no reason at all. And um, tonight, they wanted me to say that obviously we want to pray for all the victims. We want to pray for their families. But they, they also wanted me to do a moment of silence. And I'm so sick of moment of silence, like, God, it's not working, like, obviously, so, sorry. So why don't we, why don't we not do a moment of silence? Why won't we do a moment of action? Why don't we do a moment of change? Why don't we change what's happening? Because it's horrible. And, and mamas and daddies should be able to send their kids to school, to church, to movie theaters, to clubs. You should be able to live your life without that kind of fear. So we need to do better. We need to do better as so people are failing our children, we're failing our communities, we're failing their families. I can't imagine, I have four children, I cannot imagine getting that phone call or that knock on the door. So instead of a moment of silence, I want to respect them and honor them. With tonight, y'all, let's, in your community, where you live, your friends, everybody, let's have a moment of action. Let's have a moment of change. Uh, this is incredible. I mean, really, it's sickening. By the way, we're going to have Andrew Pollock on tomorrow at 2.20. He is the father of a um, of a daughter who was killed in Parkland, Florida, and he's going to talk about his outrage at how the left has now hijacked the murder of these poor kids to push their gun control agenda, as they did last night with Kelly Clarkson at the Billboard Awards. And again, when they say action and change, we know what they mean. Gun control gun confiscation, and repealing and rolling back the Second Amendment. Now, what I find incredible is no matter what the atrocity is, gun control, gun control, gun control, they're like a bunch of zombies. They will not look at the circumstances, at the facts, at the evidence. It's like a robot. You just switch him, or in this case, her on, you switch her on, and there it is. You know why? You have a moment of silence. I, I, I'm sorry. This is this is what I'm talking about. The, the the breakdown of basic cultural decency now in our country. It's not everything is political. Not everything has to be politicized. You have a moment of silence out of respect for the dead. That's why you have a moment of silence. You want to do legislative action, political action, whatever it is, you can do that after the moment of silence. The point to having a moment of silence is to respect the dead and the victims and their families. That's the point. Now, she can't even do that. She can't even do that. All she's doing, look, when you go to a funeral or you go to a wake, do you stand on the freaking coffin and make a political speech off of a soapbox? No. You're quiet. You're silent. Maybe if you're religious, you say a prayer. Out of respect for the person who's in that coffin and their grieving family. 
That's the point. It's called decency. It's called manners. It's called basic compassion for your fellow human beings. Not everything has to become ideological. Not everything has to become political. You know, we are human beings, after all, aren't we? Now, as for the actual shooting at the Santa Fe High School in Texas, okay, outside of Houston, had she bothered to read a freaking paper, she would have known the following. Demetrios Pegortsis, Dimitri, Demented Dimitri, came into that school in a black long trench coat, which hid a shotgun and a thirty-eight revolver. He stole the shotgun and the thirty-eight revolver, it appears, from his father, who had legally purchased them. So he didn't use an assault weapon, he didn't use an Uzi, he didn't use a Glock, he didn't use whatever, take your pick. He used a freaking shotgun, which has been around not just in this country, but in almost every country for hundreds of years, and a lousy freaking thirty-eight revolver, okay? If you know anything about guns, believe me, a thirty-eight is no cannon, let's put it that way. Now, here's what I find incredible. And this is what nobody in our society has the guts to discuss. Upon the rampage where he walked in to that art class at whatever, 7.30, 7.45 in the morning. He walked in there deliberately, methodically, according to witnesses. The first person he shot and killed, he said, I hate you and you're going to die today. Boom. Boom. And then he went about executing people in a cold-blooded fashion. Ten are dead, eight students, two teachers, 13 are injured, two in critical condition. Now, the parents released a statement saying, that's not our Dimitri. We don't understand this boy. It, this is incompatible with the boy that we know, according to them. He's a beautiful boy. He's a quiet boy. He's a sweet boy. I'm, I'm quoting verbatim what they're saying. And I'm thinking, hold on. You got a supposed sweet, quiet, kind, wouldn't hurt a fly kind of a guy. And you're saying you can't comprehend this killing? When his own attorney, by the way, he's pled guilty. Okay, he's, there's, there's no doubt. He said, I did it. And he's not going to talk about the motives, but he says, I did it. I'm responsible for it. I did it. His own attorney has come out and said, you know, on the one hand, he's kind of emotional about it. And on the other hand, he's sort of like weirdly, his words, not mine, weirdly non-emotional. Almost like he's playing a video game. Almost as if he's become so desensitized. By being on social media, being on the internet, playing video games nonstop, it's like he doesn't comprehend these are human beings that he just killed. Instead of some virtual reality with a joystick. That's The lawyer says, it's just shocking. I'm talking to this kid and I'm like, do you realize there are 10 dead people here? And 13 seriously injured? Like, hello? On Facebook, this good, sweet little boy had t-shirts on that said, born to kill. He had, I don't know how he got the guns, he got guns and he was posing with pictures of guns on Facebook. He was posing on Facebook, torturing and mutilating little animals and frogs. He used to come to school every day in a long black trench coat. In Santa Fe, the temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. I have a lot of people in Canada and Europe who listen to this show. They don't understand Fahrenheit. So to all of you that are non-American, it's 32 degrees Celsius. You know what that is? It's freaking baking out there. No, The parents never said, you know, why is little Dimitri walking around in the sweltering heat every day to school in some crazy long black trench coat. Something's not right with our son. Why is he posing with a t-shirt born to kill? What? Where did he get those guns that he's flashing them on Facebook? Hello? Hello? I'm sorry, where were the parents? Hello? How come nobody on his Facebook page said, you know, I'm sorry, but 
Why or the school? Why are you coming in in a long black trench coat? It's freaking 90, 95 degrees outside. Like w- w- something is wrong. Now, the warning signs were everywhere. They found improvised explosive devices. They found pressure cookers, pipe bombs, but they didn't have the right material or they couldn't detonate. So they were basically fake IEDs. He didn't know how to properly build one. Now, let me tell you what happened in Santa Fe. The media doesn't have the guts to say it. I'll say it. It was a copycat crime. It's an obvious copycat crime. He mimicked it and imitated Columbine. What happened at Columbine? Same thing. The kids wore long black trench coats. They used shotguns. They walked in and they killed 10 people. And then when they were done, they wanted, they killed themselves. They committed suicide. What did this kid admit to? He openly said, first of all, they found a journal where he's talking about he's suicidal. He's got suicidal thoughts. Okay. He kills 10 people in the lock, in the long black trench coat with a shotgun. By the way, Columbine, they had fake IEDs. He did the exact same thing. Fake IEDs. But at the last moment, instead of turning the gun on himself and eating his gun, as they did in Columbine, he admits to the cops, quote, I didn't have the courage to kill myself. Who glorified the Columbine killers? Who made them national celebrities, quote unquote? Who was the one that make movies about them, TV shows about them, wall-to-wall media coverage? The mainstream media. And so what this kid realized, this loser, who everybody in school says he's a complete loner, can't make friends, can't get along with anybody, weird as hell, walking in a long black trench coat, he's got t-shirts that say born to kill. Who do you think, what, what do you think he said to himself? Nobody takes a look at me. Nobody recognizes me. Nobody gives me the, the time of day. But they will now. Just like in Columbine. The media is going to splash my face everywhere, splash my name everywhere, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to kill me 10 people or whatever, 15 or 20, and I'm going to come in in my long black, my long black trench coat, and I'm going to put all these fake bombs... And then at the end, I'm going to go down in a blaze of glory and shoot myself in the head. Except he didn't have the guts to do the last part. You are creating these killers. You in the media. By giving them the attention and the fame that they seek. To the parents and the school authorities. T-shirts born to kill. Black trench coats in 90, 95, 100 degree weather. There are so many freaking warning signs out there. How come nobody says anything? And to the parents, I'm sorry. Don't stand there and tell me that's not the little Dimitri that we know. You should have been following and monitoring your child on Facebook. The parents need to parent, and they're not doing that anymore. You want to know why we have all of these killings? It's the same thing over and over again. Mental illness... Internet, social media, copycat killers, negligent parents. It's the culture, stupid. It's not the guns. And um, tonight they wanted me to say that obviously we want to pray for all the victims. We want to pray for their families. But they, they also wanted me to do a moment of silence. And I'm so sick of moment of silence. Like, God, it's not working. Like, obviously. So... Sorry. <laughs> so why don't we, why don't we not do a moment of silence? Why won't we do a moment of action? Ah, shut up and sing. Okay, my friends, join Relay for Life and help the American Cancer Society fund cancer research. Free rides to chemo, free places to stay in your hospitals. Register or donate today at RelayForLife.org. Okay, my friends, you want to change the culture? We can do it this Thursday, 4.15 p.m. Eastern, in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse. I will be there speaking along with Jeff Deal. We are going to demand that the corrupt, crooked, liberal judge 
Timothy Feely be impeached or removed from office, he must go. He's freeing heroin dealers, cop killers, child molesters, you name it. And it's time we said enough is enough. Please, Cooner Country, I'm urging all of you, it's time for us to make our stand and demand that this judge go this Thursday, 4.15 p.m. in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse. I will be there. Please join me if you can. Okay. Um, this story now getting bigger and bigger about this shooter in Texas. It's now clear parents were very negligent on many fronts. And yet they continue to try to blame the guns. So let me ask you this. The father, should he be held responsible for allowing his guns to be stolen and clearly not being properly secured? And what about parents out there? How come they're not talking to their kids? How come they don't know what they're doing on Facebook? How come they can't spot the warning signs that are so obvious to everybody else? 617-266-6868. Jerry on the Cape. You're up next. Go ahead, Jerry. Comrade. Comrade. How you are, my friend? Not too bad. <laughs> Jeff, you know, Kelly Clarkson sucks. Her husband, Mike Fisher, is a third-rate hockey player, and he sucks. Somehow, some way, someone got to her. There's, there's no two ways. Uh, Jerry, sorry, Brittany is yelling in my ear saying that's Carrie Underwood. She's the one with the hockey boyfriend. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> I got it's you. okay. Though. Look, just, she should just shut up and sing. You know what I'm I saying? I a lot going on upstairs here, Jeff. I, I can get confused easily sometimes. Go ahead, my friend. You want to talk about St uh, Stefan Halper? Go. You remember last week I mentioned his name to you last Monday. Yes. You were the first one to publicly out him, I believe. He is tied in with Richard Dealove, the head of MI6. They're best friends. But Stefan Halper, his father-in-law, do you remember the name Ray Klein? Wasn't he involved? What is it, CIA? He was CIA or something, wasn't he? They have pigs, Jeff. You uh -huh. got it. That's his father-in-law. But, Jeff, you know what? Eight years of Obama wasn't an administration. It was an organized crime spree. Between Fast and Furious, the IRS, Obamacare, Solyndra, Benghazi, NSA, Uranium One, Hillary, the Iran nuclear deal, the weaponization of the intelligence apparatus. Jeff, what if I told you they were all interconnected in an apparatus that will reveal 50 years of criminal behavior within our government, spanning all the way back to JFK? Would you believe me? Uh, you know, I would have, sorry, I would have doubted you, uh, even a year ago. But now? Now, I have to tell you, I would give you a very, I would seriously listen to you. I would give you a very respectful hearing. Jeff, that's what President Trump is going to uncover here. You mean the shadow government, in a sense, right? That's All what the way, well, JFK, do you remember when he said he would splinter the CIA into a thousand pieces and cast it into the wind? Yes, and then, uh, boof, bang, and he was two, gone. Two days later, our great president was no more. Interesting. Interesting, as always. Thank you for that call, Jerry. Nick in Weymouth, you're up next. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, Jeff, just scroll a little bit on that. Boy, I was so elated when he had Corsi on. I had texted you this about the Brennan connection to the Obama passport fixing. I was howling when he brought that up. So there you go. Uh, going forward with the report, I saw two uh, unfortunate things this week, and I read, one, that report will be uh, offered up to the uh, lawyers, the attorneys of the accused, or if you will, or, or referring or being referred for prosecution, for them to peruse. And I'm saying, why? What kind of protocol is that? The other thing is, it goes to Rosenstein to redact whatever he thinks needs to be redacted. So we'll be in a, in a turmoil there. And just one closing thing. <laughs> Clapper, the other, they're all communists. Clapper, what did he say? was it last week that the spying on Trump was probably a good thing. There you go. And justifies the mean. Communism is, you know, natural transparency. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much, Nick. Well said. Eddie and Quincy, you're up next. Go ahead, Eddie. Jeff. Eddie. 
Oh, Eddie, go ahead. Start leaking it. Uh, we lost Eddie. Okay, Eddie, try to call us back. Robert in Weymouth, you're up next. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah, hi. Uh, I was really uh, glad to hear Dr. Corsi's uh, theories. And uh, I don't know if anyone said it. I'm sure I'm not the first, but I haven't heard it said. We should all be saying about Obama, what did he know and when did he know it? And the other thing is... Um, I think the DNC, I wanted to ask you if they could possibly be charged under the RICO laws. Uh, look, I, I, Robert, honestly, the answer is a yes and yes. The question is, will it happen? Look, there's no question. Oh, come on, look, who are we kidding? Obama knew about all of this. I mean, you're going to tell me, think about this, okay? They planted a spy in a rival candidate's campaign. Think about this. During one of the most hotly contested presidential elections, maybe in American history. And the president didn't know. The FBI director knew. His CIA director knew. Uh, Loretta Lynch, his attorney general, knew. So everybody knew, but he didn't know. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And you're right. It's, but it's not just racketeering. It's treason. It's treason. And that's what the DNC committed. That's what the Hillary campaign committed. But more importantly, that's what Brennan, Comey, Clapper, Strzok, Page, that's what all of them committed. It was a criminal cabal. That's what this was. And my friends, I'm telling you, it's about this one issue. Who runs America? You or the Washington ruling class? That's what this is all about. And Trump's candidacy signified for the first time since Reagan, we get to run the country. And the Washington ruling class said, oh, yeah, blank you. And they framed him and they subverted him. And now we know they illegally spied on him. Now, I am telling you, if this is not the biggest scandal in American political history, I don't know what is. 617-266-6868. Speaking of mother scandals. The church, the Catholic church, is now about to rupture in front of our eyes. I've got that story, but first, people from across the state are reaching out to Stoughton after a deadly weekend accident. Denise Allen Membreno in the WRKO newsroom has all of the latest. Take it away, Denise. 235 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. This Thursday, 4.15 p.m. in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse, we need now to send a message loud and clear. We will no longer accept criminal, corrupt, reckless judges who will allow cop killers, heroin drug dealers, child molesters, child rapists to go free. It's time to demand that Judge Timothy Feely be removed from the bench. Cooner Country, it is a call to arms. Please join me this Thursday, 4.15 p.m. in Salem, in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse. We need to have our voice heard. There is public transportation if you need it, and you can definitely take the train. Uh, and as I said, I'll try to get there at about 4-ish, and we will try to kick everything off at 4.15 Feely should still be in the courthouse or leaving the courthouse when we hold our rally. I want to confront him, and I want the parents who have lost loved ones to heroin opiate overdoses to confront him as well. So please, Cooner Country, this is for you, your children, your grandchildren, people you've lost to heroin or opiate overdoses for your neighborhood, your communities, your schools. We have to now speak out because I'm telling you, someone else is going to die because of this man. The only question is who? A really good text. You can text us, by the way, WRKO, whatever your message is. It's a free speech zone to 70470-7470. This is from 339. Jeff, regarding the shooting in Texas. You didn't mention an important cause of these shootings. Parents aren't teaching their kids right from wrong. Blaming mental illness is, in caps, I can't say it 
the way it's written, uh, is bullcrap, cleaning it up. We grew up with bullying, rejection, etc., but never would harm anyone because of it. You're completely right, 339. You hit the nail on the head. Look, I was frequently bullied in school. I mean, it kind of stopped, obviously, in high school, but elementary school, junior high, uh, I was frequently bullied. I never thought once. I don't know, take a gun, shoot him, kill him, take a knife or what? Why? Because it's a human being. You just don't do that to people. But, you know, you've got parents, like, you know, I suspect these two, who are, this is not our boy, we can't recognize this boy. The, the portrait we're seeing of this boy in the media is just not the portrait that we know. He confessed to the freaking murders. I mean, what do you want? He confessed. So... I don't know. Was it when he was torturing the frogs? No. How about the T-shirts born to kill? How about the jackets and the T-shirts with the Nazi swastikas and the uh, hammer and sickle? No, that didn't, nothing, didn't register? No. How about when he kept taking the guns from the father and posting with them on Facebook? No, that didn't. How about the long black trench coat in 1995, 100 degree weather, sweltering heat, and he's going to school every day? No, no, nothing, nothing clicked for you. Then when he shoots up a place, suddenly, <laughs> that, that's not my Dimitri. Oh, please. Okay. This is not a homosexual story or an LGBTQ story or a gay rights story or it is, but it's much bigger than this. What we are witnessing right now is now the potential schism Breakup and maybe even the collapse of the Catholic Church, a 2000 year institution because of this Pope. And as you know, I have called him the Obama of the Catholic Church and just how Obama ruined this country and its institutions from within. Pope Francis is now beginning to do that in the Vatican. He is by far the most left wing Pope we've had maybe ever. His rise and power at the Vatican signifies the rise of the religious left. There's no question about it. He has been pro-amnesty, pro-open borders, pro-Islam, pro-migrant refugees, Muslim refugees pouring into Europe. He is very soft on abortion. He has been very pro-gay rights, very pro-gay marriage. He is very much pro-global warming. I could run down list after list after list, okay? But his latest comment now literally threatens the very doctrine, the very intellectual, moral, and theological foundations of the Catholic Church. According now to a, 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 a poor victim who is abused by a notorious priest in Chile. One of the most notorious priests who apparently abused hundreds of children. One, uh, the victim is an individual by the name of um, Juan Carlos Cruz. And he was uh, the victim of one of, um, of this very sick individual uh, who the Catholic Church uh, eventually convicted of child abuse Father, um, what's his name again? Father Karadima. That's right. Okay. Karadima. Uh, he was found guilty of sexual abuse by the Vatican in 2011. Well, Cruz apparently met with Pope Francis. He has now told a Spanish newspaper, because this guy Juan Carlos Cruz, the victim, is gay. He's openly homosexual, talks about his homosexuality. He says that the Pope told him, that God loves you for being gay. I love you, meaning the Pope. I love you for being gay. You have to be happy with who you are and that it is perfectly fine to be gay and to be homosexual and to live the homosexual lifestyle. Now, this is not LGBTQ. This is not about gay marriage. This is not even about homosexual sex. The Catholic Church, and this is seminal to its doctrine, you may agree, you may disagree. The fact of the matter is, this goes back 2,000 years. 
This goes from the Bible to the early church fathers. This is fundamental Catholic doctrine that has now been uh, considered core, seminal doctrine, okay, dogma, if you want to call it, going back 2,000 years. The Catholic Church teaches that sex can only be, in terms of it being moral and ethical, between a heterosexual married couple. That anything out of marriage, a heterosexual married relationship, is considered by the church immoral and unethical. Now, you may disagree. I'm not here to argue dogma. The fact of the matter is, this is what the Catholic Church teaches. It's not just gay sex. All sex outside of heterosexual marriage, according to the church, is a sin. Now, Jeff, I think it's crazy. I think it's outdated. I, that's not the issue. Put that all aside. This is fundamental Catholic doctrine. By saying this, what Pope Francis is doing, and he has not backed off the comments, the Vatican is not saying anything about this. So their silence to me is very telling. Let's put it that way. He is rolling back everything that Benedict taught, everything that the great Saint John Paul II taught. He's rolling back 2,000 years of church teaching and church doctrine. Now, there are only two possibilities. Either he said it and he meant it, or it was somehow misconstrued, and I don't think it was, by this uh, poor sex abuse victim, uh, Juan Carlos Cruz. Now, if the Pope means what he says, then he's a heretic. There's just no getting around it. He has now committed heresy. In fact, I think he committed heresy, frankly, when in 2013, when asked about gays and gay marriage and gay sex, he said, well, who am I to judge? I'm like, well, that's your job description. What do you mean, who am I to judge? You're the Pope. If you're not here to judge on moral, ethical, spiritual matters, then maybe it's time for you to retire. But now he's going much further. By saying this, the church now will have to confront him, unless he backs off. If he sticks to this, then the church now has a profound moral, theological, and spiritual crisis on its hands. Either the church has to say, kiss away 2,000 years of tradition and doctrine. In other words, the Catholic Church, as we've known it for all of human history, is over. It's over. It's a new animal. It's some kind of liberal, globalist, multicultural, permissive, everybody does whatever they want to do kind of a church. Or this, church, this pope has to be removed from office. And if he insists on sticking to this, I am telling you, the bishops, the cardinals, much of the church is going to have to then decide, do we overthrow the Pope? And if we can't overthrow the Pope, do we break away from the church and restore the traditional original church? The Catholic Church, because of this comment is now on the verge of a full schism and rupture. That's why, to avoid this, which I think would be a catastrophe on a massive historical scale, the Pope needs to follow his predecessor's example and resign. The sooner, the better. 250 here on the great WRKO. Okay, this Thursday, 415 in the afternoon, we will be in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse to demand that Judge Timothy Feely, that crook, be removed from office. Cooner Country, I'm asking all of you to join me, please. We need to take our stand now. You can take the train. There is a, um, Brittany, what is there, a train station? There is a train station that you get off literally right near the Salem Courthouse. So if you need public transportation, this is the perfect rally for you. Okay, Pope now with the latest comments, Pope Francis, shocking the world. And now it is sending reverberations to the very foundations of the Catholic Church. He has now apparently told a sex abuse victim who happens to be gay, God wants you to be gay, 
It's okay to be gay. God made you like this, and I am fine with it. He's rolling back 2,000 years of church teaching and church doctrine. Will this tear the Catholic Church apart? John in Quincy, you're up next. Go ahead, John. Thank you, Jeff, for taking my call. Go ahead, John. Um, one thing I want to say, I was born in, in Italy. My mom is from Rome. I was born in Naples. You don't really get much more uh, closer to the Vatican than that. But what's going on in the Christian Church today is what, what the Pope is doing is absolutely incorrect doctrine. He is going against what he is told to exemplify to all the people. Now listen, being gay is a sin. Anything that, that disobeys God is considered a sin. Now the way we work that out, it's not okay to be that way. It's not okay to sin. That's why Jesus came, for the forgiveness of those sins. But for some reason, people think it's okay, like the leftists and the Democratic Party, you know, everything's okay. But unfortunately, people don't understand. The only way that forgiveness is, is bestowed is through repentance. You have to repent. That's Catholic doctrine. And I'm a Christian. But people take it to the other end. And this Pope, I'm going to tell you something, he needs to resign. He's going against everything that is central to the Catholic faith. And I have a lot of Catholic friends. But he's dead wrong, Jeff. Dead wrong. Oh, he I know. John, I'm telling you, his comments, are, they're shocking. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Uh, thank you. you know, John, sin. I'm with you. Well said, by the way. Thank you for that call. Look, it, I, I'm trying to say this. Look, well, Jeff, I, dis I agree with the Pope. or I dis It doesn't really... I, of course, I respect your opinion. But that's not the issue. If he starts with this, think about it. Just logically. Right? Well, I, um, I don't know. I, I live with my girlfriend. Okay, that's fine. Um, I live with multiple girlfriends. Okay, that's fine. I don't know, really. I mean, okay, I live with multiple boyfriends. That, that's fine. Just anything goes. It was like, okay, well then, what, what is sin? That's, that's what he's doing. So, look, if you disagree with Catholic doctrine, if this guy, if the Pope is that dead set against it, go to the Anglican Church. Go to the Episcopalian Church. There's a million churches out there that believe in this, whatever, social liberalism, sexual liberalism, whatever you want to call it. But, buddy, that's not your job. Your job is to defend, A, biblical teaching, obviously. You're the heir to St. Peter. But to defend Catholic uh, teachings, Catholic doctrine, Catholic dogma. He's the Obama of the Catholic Church. He's subverting everything. All he's doing now is he's spreading chaos, division, deep division, and confusion all across the church. Now, I'm telling you, either they have to come out and say, well, it's not quite what the Pope said. Either they got to clean up this mess. If not, there's no getting around it. There is going to be a ideological, theological civil war within the church. The church is going to split. And my question is, is that his intent? Really, in all honesty, is that his intent? 617-266-6868. Larry, you're up next. Thanks for holding. Go ahead, Larry. Mr. Jeff. Larry. Uh, how are you, sir? I'm good. I, how are you, Larry? I want to make a good point here about people like Demetrius, because there's many other kids that have been poisoned by the socialist, you know, so-called Democrats and their, and their uh, uh, you know, communistic theories. Let me give you an example. Uh, there's three, three sectors in a young man's life, right, from a little age until he finishes college. The biggest player, well, it's family, it's the teachers, and then you have the religion. Yes. The biggest factor is the teachers, because they occupy the kid's life. Uh, most of the hours of each day are occupied by the teachers. You know what I mean? A very small amount is occupied by the, by the church, and then uh, not so much is spent with the parents, right? But the majority of the time of teaching the young person is done by the educational department. Mr. Kuhner, these schools, uh, instead of teaching math and, and science, they're teaching the kids about socialism, about Nazism, 
uh, and then you go to the church. Instead of teaching the, the, the most easiest thing, the Ten Commandments, how to live your life, you know what I mean? And to prosper. They, they're teaching them, you know, crazy stuff, stuff that has nothing to do with God. And then you have the parents who are not occupying enough time in the day with their children. So, but the biggest factor... It is the educational department. Sir. Oh, I'm with you. Larry, you know? Larry, you are so right. Look, they've become progressive indoctrination camps. I'm telling you, that's what public schools have become. And when you take morality out of the school, and that's what they've done, you've taken the Ten Commandments, right from wrong, moral absolutes, good from evil, you take it out of the schools, if I dare say it, you take God out of the schools, as we have over the last 20, 30 years. What have you seen? Rise in mass shootings, rise in school violence. Well, think about it. You're destroying the consciences of these kids. And you're not replacing it. In fact, the vacuum is being filled, to be honest with you, with the internet, social media, video games. Look, it's turning out that Demetrio's kid was into Satan worship. Okay, he was part of some kind of satanic cult online. Now... I'm not saying I'm a perfect parent. I'm not. But I'll tell you this. I think I would know if my Ash and Areva were in some kind of a satanic cult. But, you know, you got a parent. Parenting is work. You got to supervise your kids. You got to talk to your kids at dinner. What, how was school today? What did you learn at school? What are you doing online? What are you doing on Facebook? Nobody does that anymore. And then they steal a couple guns from the parents and boom, 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 boom. And you got 10 dead. And they're blaming the guns. Don't blame the guns. Blame the culture, for God's sakes. The guns have always been here. Michael, you're up next. Go ahead, Michael. Thank you, Jeff. Um, I love you in a non-sexual way. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Michael. I've got one minute. Go. The floor is yours. Um, what I, all I wanted to say is that the, the, the Vatican and uh, the Pope, all what he did there was a sin himself, and he should resign for sinning himself. And that's all I wanted to say, and that's where he's, that's where he's at right now. He's living a life of sin and, and uh, taking the front, basically. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much, Michael. Look, I mean, he is, he's supposed to be the shepherd, the moral, spiritual shepherd of over a billion Catholics around the world. Whatever, agree or disagree. Ay, ay, ay. Watch what you say, man. I mean, look where he just shoots his mouth off all the time. My friends, look, enough is enough. Last Pope resigned. This Pope has to resign. The sooner, the better. I gotta go. Bye-bye. The Kuna Report is powered <laughs> by Kelly Financial Services. 888-800-1881. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 100.7 WZLX HD2 Boston, and iHeart Radio Station.